Hello, everyone. How are you? Can you hear me? Yes, I can. Hi, Will. All right. Hi. Um, Jeff, since I know you, do you mind if I make you a co-host just for just for no reason? If, if it's going to help. I love to make I love to make as many people co-hosts as possible, just in case, you know you feel like doing something you can just go for it um i think there's supposed to be something like about 15 people but i also think that we are um about ready to start in a minute um i'm doing this from home for the first time um in a very long time zooming from home how's everyone doing are most of you here oh, optional yeah. Oh, sorry to cut you off. Are most of you here like you had to do something? Your principal told you you had to, or some of you are here just for fun? Required. Uh, yep, required. Yeah. But I mean, uh, I chose this one because I thought it would be fun. All right, so um, I'll say that, let's see. Um, I will say that I um, would like to tailor this as much as possible to the... Uh, people that are actually in the room right now. So um, first of all, thank you for the people who turned their camera on. But also, what what's your level of GeoGebra experience? Because I can go all beginner or I can do some more kind of advanced stuff. Uh, can you maybe, can everyone just quick in the chat, tell me like, you know, um, what sort of GeoGebra user you are? I've spent one hour on it. I've spent 10 hours, 100. I'm an expert. Okay. Whew. Yeah. Right. Um, also, if you're a complete and total beginner, I'd like to know that um, too, because um, I was sort of aiming towards beginners, but I can also do some more advanced stuff. It was a minimal. Okay, good. Twice. All right. Woo. Geometry class. All right. Hello, everyone. Um, all right. We'll, we will get started. Um, I had a, I had like an official EdCamp background, but I, I lost it. <laughs> so uh, I'll just uh, blur. I just blurred myself. I'm, I'm here at home in my house. Good morning, everyone. And uh, mostly three. Okay. Whew. All right. I'm going to try to please everyone. I have only half an hour and I don't want to waste too much time. I made a very, so I'm Will Rose. Uh, first of all, um, <clears throat> hello. I um, teach at Montgomery Blair High School where I've been for, whoops um 16 years uh and i've been using geogebra for the past um four or five years uh, i've gotten pretty good at it although of course there are there are other people who are, are more expert than i am i'm going to talk very i made a very uh silly little two minute presentation and then i want to um just jump into some some practice sound good Feel free to like interrupt and give feedback or tell me if something's not working. But all right. Anyway, here's uh here's GeoGebra. What's GeoGebra? I'll I'll talk as if maybe you don't know anything. Um, well, it's a piece of uh interactive geometry software. And okay, I'm not so old that I've been around for the for the for the birth of this, but I'm old enough that I kind of remember the way it was. And my very vague memory of when I was teaching in the early 2000s was there was something called Cabri geometry. And it was basically terrible. Um, it, people had it on their like TI 83s or 84s or whatever. The graphics were bad. It was took you a very, very long time to do anything. But the idea was good. The idea was um, uh, to have interactive geometry software uh, and you could do constructions and then the constructions could move. Um, so apparently, according to the internet, sometime around 1986, we uh, got um, the geometer sketch pad. And uh, OK, I wasn't around for that era, but I was around in like, say, 2006 when uh, we were on, I believe, version three of the geometer sketch pad. And it was amazing. I thought it was a complete game changer. When I learned this, I, my mind was blown. Um, 
I loved it. I used it constantly all the time. I used it mainly to, to make uh, pictures, but it was annoying. Uh, the functionality was limited, especially in retrospect. It was kind of ugly. Um, it was very expensive. So you had to get your school to buy it for you. And, uh, and you, it was pretty difficult to share files. So GeoGebra has changed all of that. And, um, you know, if there are any of you out there, I mean, you know, do a little, do one of those little Zoom hand raisey things. If you were once a Sketchpad user a long time ago, um, I, I will do my own one because I was. Um, GeoGebra is now just completely, as of, you know, eight years ago or something, just replaced that. Uh, what is GeoGebra? It's just, it's just Geometry Sketchpad, but better. It's free. It's wonderful. It just works in a perfect way that um, Sketchpad didn't always. Uh, it has a lot of functionality. It's being continuously updated. It's web-based. Uh, it's accessible everywhere. And so, okay, to compare, um, to compare GeoGebra uh, to, to Sketchpad, well, it's a lot like Sketchpad. And uh, it's made Sketchpad obsolete. Uh, literally, it doesn't really exist anymore. Um, it's very similar to Desmos, and uh, it has actually a lot of the same functionality as Desmos. I think it's a little bit better uh, than Desmos. Um, and uh, of course, there are people out there who use Mathematica, but that's more or less uh, geared towards like professional mathematicians and programmers. Um, all right, anyone else want to say anything? Thoughts? Do you agree with this framing? People who are in the know? Okay. James Key? I have a question. I don't know if this is the Go. time, but one of the things I used to love to do in Geometry Sketchpad was like create an animation. You know, I'd click a button and things that, would happen. That can be done. Literally every single thing you can do in, uh, in, in Geometry Sketchpad, you can do in GeoGebra as well. Okay, so what can you do with GeoGebra? Um, I, have, I have listed this um, for people who are like skeptics or something uh, or, or, or who want to know why this is worth uh, learning. Um, I have listed some things you can do with GeoGebra, sort of like an increasing order of, of um, excitement or something like that. The most basic, basic thing you can do with GeoGebra is if you want to make a diagram, say for like a, like a quiz, for a quiz for your geometry class, you can make a high quality diagram uh, with GeoGebra uh, however you want, and then you can take a screenshot of it and throw it in your tests. This is, the, this is how I learned a geometry sketch by once upon a time. This was the, the first sort of function uh, I used it for. Um, of course, you can explore on your own complex geometric construction. So anything that you can construct in geometry, and in fact, a lot of things that can't be constructed in the traditional Euclidean sense, you can make in GeoGebra, you can play around. You can create demos uh, for use in your class. So in advance, you can prepare as part of your lesson, some kind of demonstration which shows some mathematical concept. You can use uh, demos that are created by others. In fact, one of the most powerful things about GeoGebra that I don't use as much as I could or should is the fact that, you know, thousands of people are out there making amazing things and then you can just download them so you don't have to make them yourself. Um, you can share your demos with your students for their own use at home. So, okay, I do this. I don't really know how much they're taking advantage of this, but you can just send a link to your class and you can tell them to go home and just play around with it. A student can open up this link and then they can just play around and sort of learn on their own. Uh, and what I almost never do is uh, share demos with students for in-class use. So if you're in the kind of situation where everyone in front of you has a computer, then everyone can open the same GeoGebra file and start kind of playing around. It can be like a, like a powerful uh, tool for learning in class. And uh, of course, uh, what I have really never done um, is have, I wouldn't quite say this, but uh, not in an organized fashion. I've never had students sort of spend class time, you know, sitting in front of a computer, making their own constructions in GeoGebra, but I, I would if I, if I taught a geometry class. Um, okay. And then of course, there are many other things probably that I'm not even listening here. All right, so what can you use GeoGebra for? I'm here to tell you it's not just for geometry class. Um, you can also use it for pre-calculus and also for calculus. And I feel like it's not uh, being used to its maximum, um, especially maybe Desmos is, is somehow more popular as dominating the market share, but I think GeoGebra is just better. Okay, let's check it out, shall we? No more, no more talking. Let's just go to some more, some more stuff. So um, if you have never, raise your hand if you've just never used GeoGebra ever before, like you've just never been to GeoGebra.org. Anybody? Okay, well, here's what you do. You go, all right, so I, I got some experts here. So you go, you go to GeoGebra, you get this kind of not amazingly uh, user-friendly uh, sort of uh, home screen. And up here in uh, this, this is where to go. And um, unfortunately or fortunately, uh, they're trying to sort of be all things to all people. And so the, the functionality has been broken down into like a kind of a lot of different um, uh, interfaces. Although I always go to geometry because it seems to have just about everything unless you're doing 3D stuff. So if you go to geometry, here you are. 
and you find yourself okay lately it gives you a it gives you a default and in fact they're changing it all the time there was an update uh, a month or two ago so everything was a little different for me well okay um especially if you if you've never seen interactive geometry software you know get ready this is going to be very exciting here we have just a blank canvas and now you have this list of constructions constructions which are basically uh kind of uh, electronic virtual versions of things that you would do by hand with like a compass and straight edge and so you can just you know click and you can make a segment Woo! and then you can just you know drag that segment around and you can you know do things wow 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 okay so um i don't know maybe you want to make a right triangle uh to put on a quiz or something so you can do that you go over construct perpendicular and you boom and then you make the line however you want and you know do stuff boom 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 and here i have i can hide this and suddenly i made a gorgeous little right triangle feel free to drag it around however you want and you can even you know add in little things like um uh there's a right angle and there is one of the things I sort of uh, mentioned that you might want to uh, to do, and that is um, make make figures, you know, for use in a in a, in a geometry class, say, and it's it's pretty easy. And of course, you can uh, change colors uh, to be uh, to be different things. You know, if you want all your dots to be like red and you know big, then uh, you can do that. And now we have you know big big red dots or whatever. Okay, cool. Can give me more feedback if you're like anyone anyone who's like yeah 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 we know all this you know you can type that in the in the in the chat i won't be offended all right um let's do let's do something else uh let's do um let's clear all this and uh how do i do that again yeah clear all Whew. um so let's let's do something that's more of a kind of a traditional you know geometry task um let's make a you know a, a circum center and so, well, okay, maybe some little background knowledge. Uh, you know, here, here's a segment, and uh, we can um, construct the midpoint, and we can actually there's a command for perpendicular bisector. So there it is. If you take any point on the the perpendicular bisector, then uh, you can uh, prove that um, these uh, segments, these ones here that are I'm about to make them blue and dashed that they are um, equidistant um, from the from the endpoints of the of the um, of the base. And that's because um, these two triangles are, are equal by uh, by SAS, I guess, um, because it's a perpendicular bisector. And so uh, the converse is also true. And therefore, the locus of points, which is um, equidistant from the endpoints of a segment is the, the perpendicular bisector. So, okay, with that uh, bit of uh, background knowledge, we can now construct the circum center of a triangle. This is certainly in the geometry curriculum. So let's make a triangle, boom, boom, boom. And of course, the whole benefit of interactive geometry software is you can drag things around after the fact. And so everything that I'm constructing is being sort of like defined by the geometric relationships that are built in the constructions that I'm, that I'm uh, 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 selecting. So, all right, um, well, we can construct the, the perpendicular bisectors of um, two of the sides. And maybe I want points there for those. And maybe I want them to be, oops, um, like something distinctive, you know, red or something like that. And uh, big like before, boom, uh, boom. Okay, so uh, great. And uh, maybe I want these to be red too. Okay, well, um, now, this is the proof I'm doing right now. Um, we take the point of intersection of those perpendicular bisectors, J. Let's make it some kind of special color like a green and big. Well, that point J uh, being on the perpendicular bisector, um, being on the, the, the first perpendicular bisector is equidistant from the sides of the angle. And so, these two segments are equal these two orange ones i'm about to make them orange and thick and you can also do uh extra things like um if you go to settings you can you can have little styles you know decorations like like so and um so i'm trying to show off by doing things as fast as i can Woo! um all right and uh then of course uh, j also being on the other per perpendicular bisector means it's equidistant from 
uh, from uh, the from F and G. And so um, we find that all three of these are equal. And so this this thing's point we've constructed is, is the circum center. And so, okay, this is what I've just shown. And then that's the circle. And okay, the advantage of this is um, that I can now drag the, the, the triangle all around in different kinds of ways. And we can see certain theorems, you know, such that, of course, things can be, uh, can be hid later if people find them distracting, you know, um, sorry. Uh, then we can see that um, if, or at least we can speculate that if the triangle is obtuse, then the the circum center will be outside of the triangle. If the triangle is acute, it will be in. If the triangle is right, it will be on. And anyway, um, so okay, this I would call this to I would call this the traditional use of uh, of GeoGebra as an aid in a geometry classroom. And as you can see, it can be used to to demonstrate theorems. It can be used to explore various relationships uh, prior to proof. It can be used to uh, while doing the proof. I mean, if you uh, especially if you're doing like a casual proof. Maybe the, the diagram is so complicated that you just want to make the proof in GeoGebra and just kind of talk it out. Okay, uh, we can also use it for sort of pre-calculus uh, type uh, objectives. So let's see, I will maybe now open a new uh, file. Let's make, um, oh, sorry, wants me to, I guess we can save these for, for use later. So I'll call this EdCamp Circum Center number one. Um, and there we go. Uh, okay, so uh, here we are. Let's do something else. Let's make an ellipse. Do you guys want to see how to do this? I can tailor this to. Um, can I get Can I get ten seconds of feedback? All the things I already showed. Did you already all know that stuff? I I knew nothing, and I was actually about to ask about the ellipse because that's what I'm about to cover. So this is all fantastic. Woo. All right, fantastic is a great thing to say to a presenter. Um, thanks. Uh, let's see. Um, sorry. Okay, so let's go. Let's make an ellipse like from scratch. This is a relatively advanced uh, type thing to do. So, um, but I've done this before uh, many times. So, okay, first off, I want a well, okay, first off, first off, let's make some foci. Boom, boom. And of course, we can click on this and we can call this, we can relabel this point. We can be like F, F1. So, you know, the first focus, and we can call this point F2. Um, all right, and now what is an ellipse? Well, it's the locus of points such as the sum of the distances to the foci is some constant length, like the length of a string. All right, well, let me make a little helper kind of auxiliary line up here, and I will hide um, <clears throat> these points so the line just kind of stays where it is. And... Yeah, then uh, let's see, let's make our string. So I am gonna click on the line. So that will make a, a string uh, kind of on the, uh, CD will then be the length of this string of putting it on that line. And now, okay, so wow, what does it mean uh, for the sum of the distances to the foci to be the length of the string? Well, the sort of string is gonna get kind of cut up into two pieces, basically. You know, the, the first piece is gonna be from F1 to the ellipse. And then the second piece is gonna be um, from the ellipse back to F2. So let's kind of break this string up into like another piece, you know, E. Okay, well, maybe now you see where this is going. I can make a segment uh, CE and I can make a separate segment ED. And the color coding is really nice here. We can make this, you know, green and thick and we can make this, you know, red and thick. And now um, uh, point E can sort of move about uh, that string. And so um, then, uh, of course, to make the ellipse, all I need to do is um, find the points that are, you know, a green away from F1 and a red away from F2. So that is uh, easily done with um, the compass tool. And so what am I doing? It gives you a little tips here. So segment and boom, and I just do it again. Yeah. So um here, this can be red just for color coding purposes. And here, green. Um, and oops, um, I guess I can just do it like this. Um, okay, well, uh, if you're following along, then 
the point of intersection of these two circles is going to be a point on the ellipse. Because as we move around, uh, any point that's on the intersection of those two circles will satisfy the definition that the sum of the distances to the foci is a constant. And so uh, now we can um, select uh, this point F and, and do show trace. And we can go to point G and we can say uh, show trace. And now as we move the point E around, it will create uh, the ellipse. And similar constructions exist for, for the other conic sections. So this is, I think, definitely something you could do. This would be a part of like a teacher-led activity, probably, but also students could do this. All right, there's, so cool. Ooh. Ooh. Thanks, Jeff. Uh, well, um, I can even do more things. Let me not show traces anymore. Let me clear all these traces because there are some things that you know these these software programs got greedy and they can do things that you know you could can't do like um, construct the the locus you know point wise so um, there is a locus command somewhere around here construct locus and you select um, in some order I can't remember boom something like that boom and it will just make it so let me do that one more time because it's kind of like geometry so there it is. Uh, of course, you can also do this algebraically, but I think this is more fun. So now I have the ellipse and um, it's been sort of made um, for me. And uh, well, you can always kind of zoom in and zoom out. But the thing is, since it's interactive, then it's going to respond to, you know, me dragging things around. And so, in fact, what we have now is and if you find it distracting, we could even uh, we could even hide the circles. Um, because uh, they're, they're, we're sort of done with them now. And uh, well, now we just have an ellipse that we can just kind of make and, and do things with. And we, you can sort of investigate all kinds of properties of the ellipse, such as you know when the foci are very close together, it looks kind of like a circle. Ooh. Uh, when the foci are uh, very far apart, but the string is the same length, then uh, it's gonna be you know, more elliptical. The eccentricity will, will be, um, be closer to one. And of course you can even make the, the string longer and you can investigate what happens there. And ooh, oh, something happened. Uh, if you pull the foci farther apart than the length of the string, uh, because I happen to construct the, the point not on the segment actually, but on the line, we get sort of for free the, the definition of a hyperbola. This can be seen by going to the other tab, the algebra tab, which you can spend a lot of time uh, getting used to. And you can see that now as uh, E moves off the, the, the string, then um, we have intersections between the circles. If you reason through that, you can see why, why we get this as well. OK, um, let's see. There was some other. So how are we doing? Woo. All right, we have nine minutes. Uh, so that was kind of a show up there. I'm now just going to show off sort of like a lot of things that I have done in the past, like 20 seconds each. How's that sound? We'll have one just quick comment. Um, yeah. This is a great way for students to explore the definition of an ellipse and kind of get their hands dirty. Yeah. There's also like if you just want an ellipse, there's actually a built-in tool in geometry oh. that's an you're, ellipse tool. You use three clicks to get an ellipse. You're absolutely right. Yeah. So this is more of a, uh, exploring the definition of the ellipse and sort of investigating its properties. But later on, if you just want an ellipse, man, um, you you are you are correct um, that there is a command ellipse. And I think that or select two foci and then a point on the ellipse. So um, boom. And now I go to the ellipse command, focus, focus, bam. And uh, let me just drag that a little bit so you can see. Um, oh, I guess I did it in a not the way I was thinking. These are the foci and I is like a point on the ellipse. So yeah, that's what I'm saying. That's what I, uh, I was kind of referencing that GeoTrip has tools, you know, that, that um, this would be, Basically, this skips all, all of the work, the hard work that we just did. And um, actually, maybe I want to show one more thing kind of from scratch, because those of you, a couple of you who said that you were used to um, to Desmos, uh, it's going to give me that same uh, thing again. No, it won't. Um, some of you who are used to, to Desmos, uh, I'll say that basically, as far as I know, everything that Desmos can do, uh, GeoGebra can do, and a little bit better, I always go to the geometry tab because I typically, even when I'm doing uh, sort of 
graphs. I want kind of to do uh, geometric notations. But if you want to just graph a function, you can just go to the algebra panel and you can just type similar to how you would do with decimal. So let's just, you know, do something. Let's just make a function. Um, wow, there it is. It's a parabola. And uh, I'm going to let this person in. And so, you know, you can zoom in, you can look at various things, you can uh, change it to be whatever color you want, you know, blah, blah, blah. I think Desmos has the same, same functionality. And then you can, you know, plot a particular point on the parabola, say uh, three, nine, and boom, there's, there's my point. And then you can do other things like construct tangents. And so if this is a calculus class, um, well, there's just a command for that. So tangent command, select point and select object. And so boom, boom. And now suddenly we have a tangent line. There it is. And um, I believe, oh no, I uh, did that sort of wrong. Actually, you can, um, well, let's see. Uh, if, I, if you want to do something fancy, you can even... Um, like later on, after making something, you can sort of add it back to an object that you want um, with the point command attached. So I'm going to attach point A to this object. So now I just I just forced my point A to be uh, on that parabola. Anyway, now I can drag that point around and you can sort of explore all sorts of calculus type things as well. So, okay. Uh, good. And you can type, uh, you know, whatever function you want, ellipses, whatever. All right, let's look at some other stuff. So uh, my the when I finally got really, really good at GeoGebra, I haven't, um, there is an entire 3D a part of GeoGebra that I'm not gonna show, mainly because I myself uh, have never taught like a multivariable class where I needed to use it, but um, there is uh, there is an entire, in a half an hour, I can't do that much, but there's an entire uh, 3D, if you click here, um, 3D calculator, which brings you to an entirely different interface, which inc with incredible functionality. Um, yep, you can do basically anything you can think of. You can you can do it. Um, okay, uh, I'll say my experience with with GeoGebra in the past three years has come from teaching this uh, kind of advanced elective uh, in in just regular sort of two dimensional traditional Euclidean geometry, but with advanced theorems. And so here's uh, we basically ran this entire class. Uh, via GeoGebra, just somebody, uh, sometimes me, sometimes another student was in front of the computer and on the, on the board, and we just constructed uh, all the theorems and talked them out as we went. So here's a proof of the uh, existence of the, the nine-point circle, given some triangle. There's this uh, special circle called the nine-point circle, which passes through nine uh, important points. And um, let's see here, if you know some things about geometry, here is the, the, the Euler uh, line. Uh, every triangle uh, contains uh, this point H, the, the orthocenter, uh, G, the, um, the, the centroid, O, the circumcenter, and in fact, those three points are collinear. And oh, you can even see this thing, uh, watch, down here, you can sort of watch the construction happening. Um, look, so this is uh, me uh, redoing the entire construction. Okay, here's a triangle, um, I've connected the, the midpoints, I have um, drawn the, the medians in green. I have dropped perpendiculars uh, in red. And so a student can review the entire proof after the fact and, uh, and see uh, how everything got made. So even if it's kind of happening too fast for you. Uh, here's like a, a famous thing called Morley's theorem that says that if you uh, trisect uh, the angles of a triangle, then you uh, the, the intersections uh, meet in an equilateral triangle. Okay, this is just really show up. Here's something I made to uh, demonstrate uh, the Pythagorean relationships for the um, for the trig functions. And so, you know, we have uh, in a kind of interactive way, we have, you know, the, the triangle uh, whose legs are sine and cosine and, and tangent. And you can see how uh, that triangle can be can be dilated uh, to create the other three triangles. And uh, so that's kind of like fun. Um, what else? Oh, I will say that I'm not above um, uh, stealing from others. And it's one of the reasons why it's worth it to, I'm, I'm a little bit stubborn. And if I if I if something seems even possible, I'm gonna pretty much do it myself. So here is an example of something that is in 3D. And because I lack the skills to do this in 3D, I didn't try. This is actually not using the 3D um, features of GeoGebra, but is instead using uh, what's called GeoGebra Classic 
uh, which was one single program that they then split up into many different pieces. If you're coming early for the next session, just, um, you know, just close your eyes or something. We're going to start uh, in a few minutes. Uh, anyway, this is uh, the proof um, of the, the geometric definition of an ellipse. So if you have a cone and you have an intersecting plane, this orange plane, then um, you have these, these dandelion spheres that are tangent to the plane. And you can prove that the points of tangency of those spheres are uh are the, are the foci of the ellipse so i did not make this i found this but then i just edited it and took out a bunch of things that i found distracting changed some of the colors and uh kind of kind of made it my own and saved it uh locally i'm gonna just not let any more people in because i assume anyone is just early oh here's another more kind of normal uh thing you might want to do this is more of a desmos type functionality uh, just graphing some some rational functions, and here I just type these in over here, just as you would see, and you can see the uh, the the slant asymptotes and the vertical asymptotes, and you can kind of zoom in and zoom out to their local properties. This is kind of nice because this sort of uh, stresses the idea that um, when you have a rational function with a slant asymptote, it's basically just a line, you know, for ninety nine percent of the time, only for some some very small values uh, near near zero is it doing something interesting. So I have a couple different rational functions. I use I use this for sure. I, I have students you know check their work uh, by 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 going to, to Desmos and here we have some horizontal asymptotes. What else? Oh here's a cardioid. Uh, this is something I uh, made a long time ago. You can see does this thing work again? Uh, you can see oh yeah as we uh, as a circle of a certain radius rolls around another circle of that same radius, then uh, geometrically we trace out a cardioid. This is the, the geometric definition of a cardioid. Most people don't teach this. All right, running out of time. Um, this is a file I made to, to show um, that uh, the, the integral of a sum is the, is the sum of the integrals. And uh, here's a proof of the fundamental theorem of calculus. So, okay. Um, derivative of tan, et cetera. All right, I'm gonna stop now because it's 10.30. Um, I will share all this stuff later. I've been recording this session. So I'll probably, it'll probably end up on YouTube. Uh, this one or the next one. Did you guys all learn something? Well done, sir. Woo! I only had a half an hour. I did what I could. Goodbye. This, this was great. Thank you, Mr. Rose. I'm gonna do this all again. All right, everyone who was in session one, leave. Everyone who is in session two, um, did anyone enter early for session two? Oh, bye, bye. Um, raise your hand if you're here for session two. You just, you were just, you were just early. Okay, did you catch all that crazy stuff at the end? You uh, you showed up early. Okay, let's close this. Let's close this, and let's close this. Uh, all right. Hello, everyone. Let's let these people in now. Good morning. Have I gotten rid of all the session one people now? Finally. Whew. Very uh. Very ambitious to have two sessions back to back, not even a one minute break scheduled. How's your morning going so far? How's your first session? Woo! Are you here for, are you here? Excellent, whoa. All right, so I gotta try hard for, I need to go work for excellent plus. Uh, how, are you guys here for uh, like, um, for fun? Is this like volunteer or is this like obligatory? Your principal told you you had to do something. Just curious. You can type in the chat. You can also turn your camera on. Um, okay, we're gonna start now. This is 1032. I'm Will Rose. This is my introduction to GeoGebra. I would like to tailor this presentation as much as possible to, to the people that are in the room. So can I can everyone just um, quickly, either you can turn your camera on and talk or you could type in the chat. What is your experience with GeoGebra? Are you uh, a GeoGebra novice? Are you a GeoGebra power user? Do you have no idea what GeoGebra is? Have you used GeoGebra for 10 hours, 20 hours, 100 hours? Uh, what classes do you teach? Just like all in the chat, like as much as possible, novice, minimal. Okay. I've tailored this to, to people who don't know anything about GeoGebra. Okay. That's actually better. We had some experts in the previous session. They were maybe a little bit, they were maybe a little bit bored. Um, all right. So, um, 
I'll introduce myself one more time. pre can okay, perfect. Uh, my name is Will Rose. I teach at Montgomery Blair High School. I've been there 16, 17 years. I am kind of a, a, a somewhat of a GeoGebra expert, except, you know, they're always better. There are always people who know more. Okay, people trickling in, trickling in. Um, let's get started. Anyone else want to say anything? I have a very brief, I believe I'm still sharing my screen. Let's go. I have a very brief. I'm going to keep this to like four minutes. Um, Brian, just because you're in the top left-hand corner and your camera's on, do you mind if I make you the co-host and then you can just like, is that all right? Yeah, sure. Sounds good. Just like let people in and stuff. Uh, okay. Uh, welcome to EdCamp session two. Um, what's GeoGebra? Well, it is a piece of interactive geometry software. And I'm going to give like a, like a one minute history of interactive geometry software. Some of you might remember this. I am old enough that when I was uh, starting to teach in 2005, I vaguely remember this uh, thing called Cabri geometry. It was terrible. It was on the, the TI-84. It was like a little program that we had students use, maybe even live in class. It's kind of clunky, annoying. The graphics were bad. Um, I don't know. Anyone, raise your hand if you also remember this. You would have to be, you would have to be pretty old, like, like my age or older. Cabri geometry, yeah. Okay, this got replaced. Um, the internet says in 1986, but uh, I learned about it in, in 2005, this program called the Geometer Sketchpad. It was a piece of software. It was revolutionary. I thought it was amazing. It blew my mind. It suddenly, we suddenly had the power to you know, create geometry uh, uh, on the computer. And uh, I used it constantly. However, it was annoying. It was, uh, had in retrospect, limited functionality. It was a little bit ugly. It was very hard to share files and also it was expensive. So students, you know, you had to pay for it. Students did not have copies of it. And it, uh, every time you wanted students to work on it at home, they either had to buy it or your school had to buy it for them, bad. Raise your hand if you remember using Geometer Sketchpad, like at some point, it would have been sometime in the 2005 to 2015, it was very big. Um, I was on Geometer Sketchpad 3. I became very, very good at it. A lot of those skills have transferred. What's GeoGebra? Well, GeoGebra just completely repa replaces the Geometer Sketchpad. It is wonderful. It's everything that Geometer Sketchpad was. It's just better. It uh, has better functionality. It's being continuously updated. It's um, completely free. It's web-based. It's portable. It makes sharing files uh, super easy. And so it's kind of just made Sketchpad uh, totally obsolete. In fact, Sketchpad just basically doesn't exist anymore. It is very similar to Desmos. It is um, it is a kind of a, a, a sort of um, less corporate version of Desmos in some ways. Everything that Desmos can do, Geometer Sketchpad can do also, and I think a little bit better. Uh, and oh, okay, of course we should mention Mathematica. That's been around for for forty years. That's more geared towards professional mathematicians and programmers and stuff like that. Okay, uh, what can you do with GeoGebra? A lot of things. You can make, uh, and I put this in order of sort of like uh, least ambitious to most ambitious. You can make your own high quality geometric diagrams for use on sort of handouts, uh, tests or quizzes or whatever. Uh, you can explore on your own uh, complex geometric construction. So if you wanna sort of learn something or understand something, you can just make it in GeoGebra, you can drag things around, you can figure stuff out. Um, you can create demonstrations for use in class. So as part of some sort of a lesson plan, you could uh, make, make something and then you could use it uh, to show your, your class some mathematical properties. You can also, and this is a very popular uh, thing to do, you can just find uh, demos on the internet and uh, created by others, download them and just use them in class. You can share your demonstrations with students for their own use at home because it's um, so simple and free to just copy a URL and send it you know, uh, home via Canvas or whatever to your students to click on. They can play with it later and you can make a homework assignment that says, you know, go to this GeoGebra file and drag this around and you know, tell me what happens. Um, you can also uh, spend class time. This is something I don't do as much, but you can also spend class time with students who each have their own, you know, Chromebook or whatever in front of them, uh, working with some some uh, some file, and having them kind of explore and learn in class. And you can even this is more appropriate for maybe for a geometry classroom. You can have students uh, kind of creating their own constructions from from uh, from scratch as part of the learning process in your class. And there's even sort of other, other things you can do. 
okay, what can you use GeoGebra for is not just for geometry. It's also very powerful to use in a pre-calculus class or a calculus class. And like I said, basically everything that Desmos can do, uh, GeoGebra can do also, and I think better. Um, should we go? Let's check it out. You can open a screen right now if you want, but I will go if you just type, um, everyone can see my URL. If you just type geogebra.org or even just even just geogebra into into your um, into your uh, search bar, then you you get to this page. Which frankly, they could do a little bit of a better job here because it's already uh, a little bit unclear. You know, well, what should I do? Um, well, up here in the top right hand corner is that if you click on these uh, nine little dots, you get a bunch of choices you have to make initially. I always just go straight for geometry. So let's let's do that. All right, here I am, and um, no, I don't need those. Okay, so let's uh, clear these these axes, and what we have now is just a blank geometric canvas. And so, if you're in a geometry class, um, one thing you might want to do is like you know make some stuff like triangles or whatever. Okay, let's make a right triangle. You know, so you have a segment, boom, and now um, this segment can be dragged around. You can move this point B. You can. This is what it means to be an interactive geometry software. This um uh, way we have constructed this segment means that it's uh defined to be the segment connecting point a and point b and as those points move around you know everything moves all right and now we can say for example maybe i want to just do something very basic like make a right triangle so okay i can construct a perpendicular line right there uh put another point over there and um then make this triangle which has been constructed to be a right triangle. And so, well, now, um, no matter how I drag it around, it stays a right triangle because it's kind of been defined that way by construction. And uh, we can, you know, label this, say like so, boom, boom, boom. Um, and now I have this beautiful thing and I might wanna just take a screenshot of this, for example, and just drop it into like some worksheet or test or quiz or whatever. Okay, that's like the most basic uh, thing that you might do uh, by yourself. Let's clear all this. Um, let's do something more exciting. Um, something that would be, again, more of a traditional kind of geometry activity. Well, um, let's uh, first explore a property that you all know, which is that the uh, perpendicular bisector of a segment is the um, every point on that perpendicular bisector is equidistant from the sides of that segment. So let's first construct the perpendicular bisector of this segment AB and the foot of that perpendicular by, oops, I missed. The foot of that perpendicular bisector will be C. So C is just the midpoint of that segment. And now we can just pick an arbitrary point on the perpendicular bisector, let's call it P. And well, um, if I now connect P to A and P to B, um, then um, we see that these segments are equal. We can change their colors. We can change them to be, you know, thicker or thinner. You can, I'm doing all this stuff as fast as I can just to give you kind of a taste of this all. Okay, and uh, well, what's the reason that these two uh, blue dotted segments are equal? Uh, it's because C is the midpoint and it's also, there's also a right angle here. And so these two triangles are equal by SAS. And so, so there you go. Okay, great. And uh, this point P can be dragged around and you can kind of visually observe. Um, well, the converse is also true that if you pick um, a point P, which is equidistant from A and B, then uh, it will uh, be on the perpendicular bisector, which can be shown by dropping this perpendicular and then I guess like HL or something like that shows that that these two triangles are equal. So this is in fact the uh, the midpoint. Um, okay, now uh, it has a measuring tool. Yup, you can do that. You can click on this and it will do stuff like, if you go here, you can say show value and it'll just say 8.4. You can measure angles. Um, so boom, boom, boom. Um, again, everything sounds like you guys. So that's 69.3 degrees and that changes, you know, dynamically. So, yeah, um, I guess, I guess you guys don't seem to from my, from your reaction or lack of reaction, I guess we didn't have a lot of, uh, geometer sketchpad power users among this group, but everything that that program could do just does as well. Uh, okay. Anyway, I want to kind of show off some more, more stuff. Well, now that you have this piece of background knowledge, of course you can, uh, let's, let's make the circumcenter. So, okay. Um, boom, boom, boom. 
and I'm going to make a big triangle, and that triangle will be D, E, F. And again, I really like the, the little things, like we can make those black and like thicker. And so we got our, we got our triangle here. And now let us um, apply this little theorem that we just learned. Well, let's construct some perpendicular bisector. So there's a perpendicular bisector tool, and you can just click on a segment, it'll just make the perpendicular bisector again. And uh, two is, is actually enough uh, for now. And we can make the midpoint of this segment, which is just gonna be that point right there. And uh, all right, if we want everything to be nice and pretty, we can make this dot, you know, like really big and like red or something. This can be red as well. And now, whoop, um, what let's do, let's do some actual geometric reasoning. Well, take this point I, which is at the intersection of these two perpendicular bisectors. And maybe let's make one dotted just for fun. So, okay, so think about this point I, of course, it's on the dotted red perpendicular bisector. So what we just learned, it must be equidistant from the sides of the dotted red perpendicular bisector. And therefore these two segments are equal. So these two guys, which are orange, and you can even go to settings and you can make little annotations and stuff, boom. So that's kind of cute. And uh, boom, boom. So these two oranges, oranges are equal because uh, point I is on the, the perpendicular bisector. But also, it's also true that I is on the other perpendicular bisector. So therefore, um, I must be equidistant from, from the side, from E and F. And so that proves that there is this point um, I, which is equidistant from, from all three vertices. And um, since I is equidistant from D and F, that in fact shows that I is on the perpendicular bisector of the uh, side DF. And thus we've shown that the three perpendicular bisectors of every triangle meet. And then we get this, we can using the circle tool create this circle and this point I is called the circumcenter. And this is called the circumcircle. Usually we, we use, we call this O for a circle. Okay. Um, and uh, so that's like a fun little thing. This is an example of using GeoGebra maybe like in front of a classroom to talk the class through, uh, through a proof. But then as opposed to drawing on the board, you know, you have now the ability to drag things around. Of course, you can always hide some things later if you, if you decide that they're um, maybe like distracting. And um, once you believe in the existence of the object, then you can just kind of uh, focus on it. Oops, I think I hid um, my point G. Let's make that come back. No, uh, I guess that must have been D. Yeah, okay. Um, and so now we can drag the triangle all around and we can explore various properties and conjectures such that uh, if you have an obtuse triangle, the circumcenter is outside the triangle, and an acute triangle, the circumcenter is inside the triangle. Okay, how are we doing? Can I get some feedback in terms of head nods? You can type some things in the chat. This is more like this is more like a this would be like the traditional use of GeoGebra as a as a tool in a in a geometry classroom. Thanks, session two. Um, all right, what else can you do with this? Well, it's not just it's not just for geometry teachers. Uh, because, you know, isn't isn't all of math really just geometry? Basically, that's what I think. Let me let me label this circum center ed camp session two. So we can save this for later. And maybe I should even say something about this. Oh, you know, I, I never even thought to do this. Here we go. Um, I can just drop this whole thing in the chat. Ooh, great potential. I, I hear that a lot. People have been saying that to me my whole life. Um, so you can just click on this. It is just better than Desmos. That is my opinion. Yep, more options, more functionality, better integration between geometry and algebra. So you can just click on that. And now, you know, it's yours. You can play around and you can change it however you want. Let's do something else. Let's just, we only have 30 minutes. So let's just do as much as we possibly can. I'm going to make a new file now. Um, let's make an ellipse. So suppose you're in, I guess that's in the geometry curriculum. So that's kind of annoying. But uh, anyway, um, suppose you want to learn about an ellipse. Well, what's an ellipse? It's the locus of points that are equidistant uh, from two points that we call the foci. So let's make a focus, boom, boom, and a boom, boom. 
And uh, if you click on the point, you can go over to here and you can change the name of it. You can call this F1. You can call this point F2 for focus one, focus two. All right. Now I want to make my string. So I'm going to make a little line over here. And this line will be kind of like a little auxiliary line. I'm now going to I'm going to hide. Um, GeoGebra does have that capability um, person in the chat, but I am not such an expert on that. Uh, but and it's possible that it's not as good as the Desmos. They have it, but I've just never done it. Um, so anyway, yeah, I got this line now. What's the point of this line? Well, on this line, I'm going to make my string. So let's click here and click here. And this line CD is now going to be my string. So my string is of length CD. So I assume everyone you know knows is comfortable with the definition of an ellipse. What I now need to do is make all the points such as the sum of the distances from F1 uh, to the ellipse and back to F2 is the length of the string. And therefore, I kind of need to split the string up into two pieces. So let me now drop another point sort of uh, part way along the string. And uh, of course, E can sort of move around. And so I'm changing the kind of uh, way in which I uh, split up the, the length of the string. And so, uh, all right, well, maybe now you sort of see kind of what to do, right? Let C E be one segment and E D be another. And if I click on this and make it red and also thick and click on this and make it blue and also thick, then what do I uh, uh, want uh, to do now? I want to consider all the points such that um, I'm red away from F1 and I'm a blue away from F2. And of course I can easily do that. So I go over here to the to the compass tool and I make a um, uh, a circle which is uh, of radius the red segment and centered at F1 and I now make another circle which is of radius uh, the blue segment and circle F2 and for for color coding purposes we can make this um, red and actually we can just do this copy this so we can make it nice and thick also. And I can just do that again. Boom, boom, boom. Okay. Well, uh, as point E moves around, now I'm changing the sort of way I split the string up into two pieces. And so the intersection of these two circles, if you guys are following this, will be by definition a point that is on the ellipse. And so we can like, you know, make this like green or something. Um, and maybe I want to make this bigger too. I like to go for the style points. Um, then uh, as uh, E moves around, these two points F and G trace out the ellipse. We can even go and say show trace and over here show trace and now just manually drag this point around and we see that the ellipse is being created. So cool. Okay, wait, there's more. Um, let's clear these traces because um, GeoGebra will do things that you cannot do with Euclidean constructions. Um, and uh, let's clear those traces. Now let's just make the lo go over here to the locus command. And I can just select boom, boom, and uh, boom, boom. And I've now constructed um, the something you can't do with the straight edge and comp. Well, that's not what I meant to do. Uh, something you can't do with the straight edge and compass, which is just to construct an ellipse. And um, yeah, and uh, because it's interactive geometry software, dynamic uh, interactive geometry software, now as you move you know, the foci around, the ellipse is gonna change kind of with you. And so you can explore all the various properties of an ellipse. Perhaps now you've decided you don't even want um, this, these circles here anymore because you, you kind of like get it. And uh, you just wanna focus on the foci and the length of the string. Of course, you can let the string be longer. If you let the string be longer, then you're uh, making the ellipse, you know, less less elliptical. The, the eccentricity is going uh, closer to zero. If you move the two foci really close together, of course, you get something which is almost a circle as well. So you can explore all those properties here. That now the eccentricity is like really close to one. So that's like pretty fun. You can even drag if you drag the foci far up apart enough from each other that they uh, their distance from each other is bigger than the length of the string, well, then you get a hyperbola, which is showing the, the relationship between those two definitions. And uh, we can go to the we can go to the tool command 
uh, no, sorry, the algebra command, and you can sort of see that this is a more of an advanced uh, panel. This is showing uh, every single thing that we made in, in its kind of exact description. So we can click on this and make those circles come back again. And you can sort of understand why this uh, hyperbola is being formed uh, because now as the point um, E is moving off of the segment, um, we get uh, the circles intersecting kind of over here and you can see, uh, confirm to yourself that this is the, that this is the definition of a hyperbola. Okay, Woo! are you impressed? I know what you're thinking now. You're probably thinking, okay, okay. Well, let, well actually, let's let's save this. Let's call this um, ellipse ed camp uh, session two. Um, and I should uh, share this with you. It's really that easy. Um, it just gives you a link, and we can copy it and throw it in the chat. I didn't think to do this last session. Um, what else can we do? We can do things. Um, that aren't really like geometry that are just, um, although I think it's all geometry, uh, we can do things just with, you know, algebra, things that you might uh, have done with Desmos, say. I still go to the geometry tool because um, it has kind of the most capability, but if you click on the algebra panel, now you can just type functions. So we could just do things like, hey, um, let's make the function x squared, and it will, it will label it. Uh, however it wants, but if you want to label it a certain way, then you can do just what I've done. And then you can, you know, switch back and forth. You can construct a point on that um, uh, parabola and you can sort of, you know, drag, drag that point around and you can do things even, you know, calculus type things. Uh, for example, you can make a tangent. So I can construct a tangent line and there's just kind of a command for that. So um, boom. And now I have a tangent line in red. And as I move this point around, you can see, you know, the slope of the tangent line changing. So um, you can uh, uh, do lots of things with this. All right, we got five minutes left. Anyone, anyone have any questions, comments? I'm really, how can we use this to create worksheets? Um, you can make worksheets by just, uh, just, you know, copying it, right? I mean, um, I don't know if you can see what I'm doing here, but just use like the snip tool and you know you just go like boom and you copy and then you just drop it in the chat let's see well let me paste the picture no it won't maybe it will um anyway that's that's i do that all the time um and uh okay now with five minutes left let me just show off a million things that i've done in the past uh do you want this file it's not that exciting this one i'll just call this uh Tangent to a parabola ed camp um, number two. And uh, I will put it in the chat. Um, but uh, yeah, what else? I became so good at um, GeoGebra kind of, kind of recently um, when, oh, and I guess there's this one too. I don't know if you guys really want these files or not, but anyway, you're getting them. Um, uh, I became really good at GeoGebra recently when I taught a class called Advanced Geometry, which is this kind of uh, advanced uh, elective uh, for seniors where we just did sort of regular two-dimensional Euclidean geometry. So if you know a lot about this, maybe, you, you know, you can see how these get, these get uh, three, I think this is it. I think there's just, I think there are only sessions from 10 to 10, 30, 10, 30 to 11, right? I don't think there's a third session. Oops. Um, <laughs> well, anyway, uh, five minutes left to go. I'm just going to throw a whole bunch of things uh, kind of in your face or whatever. Here's um, the this uh, uh, famous thing called a nine-point circle. Uh, you might have heard something about this once you're left. You have a triangle, and you can see um, that uh, there's this uh, famous circle, which goes through nine of these sort of important points. Um, yeah, sure. I can show you. Uh, I think I'm going to record this whole thing and put it up on on uh on youtube later but oh, let's just um let's just just jump to the end here here is uh another uh, kind of a famous advanced geometry thing um this is the proof that in every triangle uh three important points h the orthocenter the intersection of the altitudes uh g the centroid the intersection of the medians and o the um the circumcenter the the intersection of the perpendicular bisectors that they're all collinear and I made this file in class with the students kind of, you know, watching and talking it out with me as we go. You can always play it back later. So this is another sort of piece of functionality here. 
I am, as you can see, I'm, you know, constructing the midpoints, constructing the medial triangle, dropping perpendiculars uh, in red. Uh, that's the orthocenter. Now I'm doing more, you know, crazy things, blah, 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 blah. And so you can sort of replay the entire construction. So that's kind of nice. Uh, here's another famous kind of fancy geometry theorem. Never mind that. Here is a more uh, kind of a normal thing. This is a, a proof of the Pythagorean properties of the trig functions. So here you see kind of like a quarter uh, unit circle, and uh, this is the right triangle. You know, sine cosine one. I think everyone's you know seen seen that picture before. But here you can sort of watch and let students kind of uh, drag um, a point around the circle, seeing how this is the geometric definition of tan and secant and uh, the geometric definition of, um, of cosecant and cotan, you can sort of see the triangles kind of being dilated into each other. And uh, so that, that can be kind of a powerful tool. Um, here is another thing you can do is steal other people's stuff. If you just go to GeoGebra and you just um, search for something, there's probably someone already made it. I'm a little bit of a stubborn guy. I like to make my own uh, stuff. So if I can even possibly see how this could be done, you know, I'm going to do it myself. Here's an exception. This is something where I just didn't feel like I was up to it. And I assumed it was already out there. So this year when I taught um, ellipses, uh, I uh, did the proof of the geometric definition of the ellipse to, to show that those two, two definitions are equivalent. I found this uh, interactive file about uh, Dandelion spheres. Some of you might know something about this. We have this cone. We have this orange plane intersecting the cone at a certain angle, creating an ellipse, uh, supposedly. Uh, how are those two definitions connected? Well, um, you have these spheres which are tangent to the sides of the cone, and they are touching the plane at a certain point, and those turn out to be the foci. So I found this file, I downloaded it, uh, and I, uh, I changed a couple things because I, I know enough GeoGebra to, so that I could um, change the colors and stuff like that. Here's uh, just, just one more minute or something, then I'll stop. Here's uh, another more sort of traditional, maybe boring, not so ambitious uh, application. Just graph some rational functions, man. So it's just like um, just like Desmos, uh, but like I said, I think better. You can type some function here. You can check it out. You can easily, you know, you can see the vertical asymptotes, the slant asymptote. You can you can zoom out to see that when a when a rational function has a slant asymptote, you know, it spends ninety nine point nine percent of its time just just being uh, just being that line. And um, of course, uh, here are some more rational functions during the, during, during the unit on rational functions, just in class, every time we finished a problem, I just graphed it on the screen so they can sort of see the properties and zoom in and out and kind of explore. Here's a more advanced one with a, with a horizontal asymptote. Um, this is the geometric definition of a cardioid. If you have a circle that's rolling around another circle, uh, I made this file to show that that actually traces out uh, a, a cardioid. Uh, and Limasan has a similar thing. You can do, I do a lot of stuff with calculus. This is kind of the proof that the integral of the sum of two functions is the, is the sum uh, of the integrals, which is not totally obvious. Uh, a proof of the fundamental theorem of calculus. I use this just as a static uh, thing. And here's a proof of the derivative of tan, a geometric proof of the derivative of tan. So, okay, this, is, uh, this was 95% stuff that I made myself, but there's tons of stuff out there and you can just search around. So I'll end now because it's 11 o'clock. Hopefully you guys got something out of this. If you have never seen GeoGebra before, this is maybe a little bit overwhelming, but I wanted to show you kind of all of the, the power of this. I don't think this presentation is really worth sharing because it's pretty, pretty lame. But uh, go to GeoGebra, play around, check stuff out. You can follow some of those links. Um, okay, hopefully that was fun. I'll, anyone have any questions? If not, I'm out. Enjoy the rest of your professional day. I'll hang around for two more minutes. Uh, which links would you like? Well, I, I was hoping that um, you can share this presentation with me because I came in late. I signed up for three, ah. but we're only required to sign up for two, but I was interested in this. Well, my um, if you can see my screen right now, my, my presentation per se, was just a couple of little quick slides. I just kind of talked about the history of, of dynamic geometry software. And then I've spent the rest of the class just, just playing around, actually just, just making the um, just making the, the figures live. So it was more of a just me showing type thing. Um, oh, okay. That's okay. But I did, if you want the like link, like I can, 
say, for example, um, you know, just throwing it in the chat right, right now, one second. Um, you know, if you click, oh, uh, I see someone is, let me try that again. Um, if you click on that link, uh, that will bring up, you know, you'll just get this exact file that I have right here. Maybe that okay, one's yeah. not so not so exciting, but this one yeah. is kind of exciting if you're if you're going to be teaching the um, the Pythagorean uh, trig identities. That's certainly a, a part of precalc. You might want to use this use this demo mm -hmm. to explain, you know, and 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 have students you know play around with this. So um, I can share some of these uh, links with you if you want, um, or potentially I could organize them a little bit more uh systematically but uh the the presentation itself if you came in late um there'll be a copy up on youtube i think that uh okay. chris klein is gonna is gonna organize that for everybody so okay great thank you yeah. i look forward to that okay all right well hey, have a wonderful day thank you, you too welcome bye 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 all right anyone else with any last minute questions peter carl oh. there's is okay. there like a attendance thing or anything like that i was just wondering uh it's a really good question i think there was like a survey i was supposed to pat link to but i didn't i didn't do that um i mean i if it's like a matter of uh you know if you if you ever need to proof if you have some mean principle or something that you were here i i have attendance that's like built okay. into zoom you know but i didn't yeah um, i, I don't know I don't, yeah, I just never know because I know they like wanted us to do two of these. I just don't know how they're gonna, how they, and how, my could, school, how do they know if you did them or not? Yeah, I have no yeah, idea. yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, well, at my school, they never follow up on anything ever, so I'm not really used to that. But if you, um, yeah, if you need, I was like you, in my school. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Pros and cons. Uh, if you need me, if you need me to vouch for you or whatever, you know, you're you're right. in my Zoom attendance. But I don't think I was, I don't think I was supposed to do anything in particular about that. All right. Yeah. Just, I uh, just wanted to ask. Okay. Thank you. All right. Welcome. Appreciate it. Bye. Have a good one. You too. I just, I was wondering if you could do like a polar polar graphs on. on yeah, the absolutely. Um, you can do that if you go once again. Let's see, how do we do this? To geometry and algebra, and you just want to type like you know, if you just type r equals four cosine. Um, I think I can maybe even just say theta, and it will just be smart enough. Let's see. No, let me try that again. Um, R, I know that there is a way to do this. R equals, it's been a while. Um, if I just do all, yeah, there we go. Um, you just have to type the theta alt T uh, plus like two, boom. Then it just defaults into, it just defaults into polar if you just type R as a function of theta. Did you catch that? Uh -huh. So wait, how'd you get the theta again? Uh, alt T. So you just do uh, you just do r equals four cosine for any anytime you want a Greek letter if you just do alt uh, if you just hold alt t it just assumes that you want theta okay. and uh, there it is and you can how, how about the polar graph paper is that... yep you can change that too that's just uh, for your axes oops um, for your grid you just pick polar instead. All right. Thank you. Welcome. All right. See you. Have a good day. Okay, you too. Bye.